Hi, my name is Jesse Anderson, and I'm here to talk to give a little bit more technical explanation of the Infinite Monkey Project. Uh, this is the monkey project that actually randomly created Shakespeare. So far, it's re recreated a lover's complaint. You might have read about it or heard about it on various tech websites like Slashdot or Gizmodo, at, or even ma some mainstream media sites like CNN and BBC. So, as I mentioned, this is a much more technical explanation of it. So I'd like to start off with the main technology behind the Monkey Project, and that's Hadoop. Hadoop is an open source implementation of some of Google's technologies, namely MapReduce and DFS, which is a distributed file system, and the Monkey's Project makes use of both of those technologies. So to start off, um, let's talk a little bit about Google. So Google, and that was what made Google back in the day. If you were old enough and you used the web at that time, you'll remember that the difference between in speed between Google searches and Yahoo searches was very big. And that was one of the things that took really made Google take off. So why was Google searches so much quicker? They were using a thing called MapReduce, a technology that they, that they called MapReduce. And that was something that Larry Page and Sergey Brin actually came up with and wrote a paper on. Doug Cutting, the, the guy who, who created Hadoop, made the, an open source implementation based on that paper. So MapReduce, what is MapReduce? MapReduce is a way of taking a problem that's this big and then chunking it up into pieces, to lots of pieces that are this big, and distributing that load across multiple machines in a cluster and using the results from that. And that was a very big deal back in the day where not as much now, but in the past, those machines were, come on, they, they weren't super high-end machines, but they were the machines that, the, that were available. And since they created MapReduce, they were able to use commodity machines like that and really have them perform well. So that, that was what made Google Google back then. So that MapReduce al um, algorithm takes a chunk of, of the work and says in, within the cluster, you computer do this part, you do this part, you do this part, you do that part. And then the reduce part takes all of those machines in the cluster, their results, and puts them together in a result that came back to you as a search result. Another big thing that Google came up with was the Google file system. That was a distributed file system that could be that any machine within that cluster could actually access that file system and make changes. So if you think about something as big as the World Wide Web, even at that time, no single machine could actually hold that. So what you do is you create a distributed file system where all of that data is spread around lots and lots of machines and they can all be accessed. And you also build redundancy in there so that each, each part is chunked into multiple parts. And those multiple parts aren't just on a single machine, they're on this machine and that machine and that machine, depending on how you set it up. And that's another thing that Hadoop actually did. They created that distributed file system to be able to take that data and have it anywhere. So in the case of the Monkeys project, the distributed file system is used for the Bloom filter, which I'll go into more, as well as the, the output files. So the files, the, the, whenever a string is found, it's written to that file. Uh, and you can download those, those files if you contact me. So let's get a little bit more into the algorithm itself, the algorithm that the Monkeys project is using. So as I mentioned, I'm using MapReduce. So there's the map portion of the Monkey project, and then there's the reduce part of the, of the project. The map is creating the data. The, the reduce is taking that data and making something usable out of it. So the map starts with a pseudo-random number generated uh, nine-character group. That nine-character group is created using the, the, the random number generator made by Sean Liu called the Mercine Twister. And that's a very fast 
random number generator. That was one of the things that I needed early on. I needed very fast random number generation so that, thing, that the monkeys could work as fast as possible and have very good random results. So that nine character group is created in memory. Then it's passed on to something called a bloom filter or a bloom field. And in my opinion, that's one of the big things that sets this project apart from other projects. It allowed, it, it caused a great speed up in what the, what the monkeys were doing. So that speed up was significant. It was 20 to 30% in comparison to a, a Java string contains or an index of. Uh, what the way a, a bloom filter works is you set it up to say uh, and you calculate that out you say I want this number of this number of false positives is acceptable and it, a bloom filter will never give you a false negative in, in other words if the bloom filter says it's not there it's not really there but it will give you false positives on the other hand where it will say it's there but it may not really be there so you need to do another check at and that's done in the reduce part so the a that nine character uh, group is passed to the bloom filter and that bloom filter is run through and the bloom filter actually hashes it uses hashes to to figure out if a if a particular character set is contained in there and it's important because the Shakespeare, the, the amount of data in the Shakespeare that I have is a little over three megabytes. And doing a check of through three megabytes is quite a bit of data each time. For the number of times that I'm running this through, which is 5.5 trillion as of today, we, I, I would be much, much lower in that, in that realm because I would be using an index of which isn't as efficient. You need, I needed this part of the algorithm to be as efficient as possible. So as whatever passes that bloom filter is added as a result to the map. And then that map actually passes that data into the reduce. And it's the reduce's job to take all this data that came from the map and say, this is relevant, this isn't relevant, and it'll, it'll throw out what's, what's um, what were false positives in the that came from the map, and uh, what's what it's, the reduce is using right now is the string index of, which isn't as efficient as I like it. But what's happened is I have improved different parts of the algorithm. There's always something that pops up to the top of not being as efficient. Um, so what I would do for this particular part is I would use a Lucene or Sphinx to do the to do actual indexing and it would be much faster in that regard. So um, I'd really I'm glad that you guys uh, enjoyed the project. I'm getting a lot of great feedback from it but I'm also getting some negative feedback and I'd like to address some of what people are, are saying. Um, I I do understand what infinity is, I do understand infinite monkey theorem, and I understand that there are multiple interpretations to the infinite monkey theorem. This is my particular interpretation because I don't have an infinite amount of resources. I don't have infinity monkeys, an infinite number of monkeys. I don't have an infinite number of computational resources. And I would love to do it that way, but this is the real world and so I had to figure out what can I do that will actually work in the real world. In this case it's the the project has taken a month, over a month, and I've gotten one result or one work recreated randomly. So it's very important to, to, to make that distinction. I do know this and so you don't need to remind me. Um, there's no need to, to uh, settle my hash as it were. I do understand it. But I really appreciate everybody taking a look and watching the video.